Welcome, I'm Drew Davis and I'm a manufacturing application engineer here at Go Engineer. Today I'm going to be speaking about how 3D printed parts can be used in traditional metal forming processes. This is the second installment of a mini-series that I'm presenting on ways that additive manufacturing can be used in traditional manufacturing methods. As I stated before, this installment is going to be about how 3D printing can be utilized in traditional metal forming practices. So what is it? What defines metal forming? How does it differ from, say, machining or casting? Essentially, metal forming is a general term that stands for making metal parts without adding or removing material from the original blank. The mass of the material remains unchanged until the trimming, polishing, or whatever secondary process is appropriate. Now that we defined what metal forming is, let's discuss what types of metal forming processes exist. This is a list of just some of the various metal forming processes. These are the ones that I'm deciding to focus on today for this presentation. I've chosen these because with each process in this list, I feel there are opportunities for time savings cost savings, or both, if we utilize 3D printing. So let's dig in. We'll start with sheet hydroforming. Sheet hydroforming is a cost-effective way of shaping ductile metals such as aluminum, brass, low-alloy steels, or stainless steel into lightweight, structurally stiff, strong pieces. In sheet hydroforming, there are generally two denominations hydroforming in a traditional sense where the fluid contacts the sheet of metal and bladder forming which is sometimes called flex forming where there is a bladder that contains a non-compressible fluid but no fluid actually contacts the sheet bladder forming is most used for low volume production the sheet of metal is formed around a solid die and very detailed parts can be produced using this method i was brought in on an interesting application where our manufacturer was in need of flex forming a heat shield with a slight overhang on one edge. And normally that's a really difficult thing to do. As you can see in all the parts here, they have what we call a draft angle so that there, there's no real straight up and down lines. They all can be pulled off of the die. The manufacturer determined that he needed to have a ring created in the rough shape of the heat shield to draw the metal through it so that it wouldn't crumple before being forced into the shape of the overhang. The material we were forming was a thin gauge aluminized steel and we used an ultim material to produce the draw ring. It actually worked perfectly and the customer was supremely excited and we were able to get quite a few good parts out of it before the uh, ultim ring showed any signs of wear. So that right there is one application, a draw ring for pulling the metal through so that it doesn't wrinkle. But I also think that you can produce the die, the actual form that you are draping the metal over. I think you could produce it with FDM and get pretty awesome shapes because you're not limited to traditional manufacturing like milling or turning your metal form, the die. So instead of sending files to the mill to be machined, you could just print them and start forming. We have various FDM materials that would be suitable for this process, depending on the necessary pressures required. For instance, ABS can handle about 3000 PSI, while our Ultim material can handle pressures up to 10,000 PSI. It's way up there and it's excellent for great feature detail. With the traditional hydroforming, the one where fluid actually makes contact with the metal sheet. It's usually done with a male solid punch and a female mold. They sometimes call the female version a uh, mechanical deep draw. It's less common than flex forming, but generally more versatile. You can form in any direction you need with that method. And I believe you can print both the male or the female dies. Tube hydroforming is the expansion of metal tubes into a shape using two die halves, which contain the raw tube, non-compressible fluid, 
is then filled and pressurized within the tube, which compresses it outwards against the die halves. The customer that I mentioned in the previous slide actually had a tube hydroforming machine, and they used it to create a custom exhaust pipe for one of their motorcycles. In fact, it looks exactly like the flames on the tube in the top right picture there. I would be surprised if that picture isn't from their website. The way that they did it, they printed the two die halves out of PPSF, polyphenol cell foam, with one of our Fortis FDM machines, and applied roughly 8,000 PSI. They found that by increasing the pressure gradually, they were able to achieve excellent detail of the flame features and sustain the die halves for a couple cycles. This is one of those applications where if you can design anything, you can make it happen. The more difficult the die would be to mill, the better it becomes for FDM, really. Bead rollers and bead formers make it easy to add strength and rigidity to sheet metal parts. Parts like floor panels, firewalls, even tube ends that will be used for radiator, heater core, intercooler, fuel lines, or vacuum plumbing, or ducting, any way you are essentially going to connect two tubes together. Usually, you need to have a bunch of bead rolling dies to be able to have some diversity in your capabilities, and the geometry really isn't that creative, as you can see on the bottom left corner there. One of the benefits to printing your bead rolling tools is the fact that you can get away from having a lot of expensive hardware on hand. You just simply design your tooling, then keep a digital inventory of the STLs and the build files so that you can print them when you need them. And you aren't limited to the same shapes, to, to geometric shapes. You can get really creative, like the picture in the middle. Now, there is a disclaimer I'm going to state, and I'm going to use it for a lot of these examples, likely. It is essentially that with certain gauges of more workable metals, it'll be possible to 3D print the tooling. I don't recommend trying to roll quarter-inch carbon steel, for instance. The pressures required are substantial, and it's not that this tooling can't handle it. You just may not get the life you expect. Since we're talking about adding features to sheet metal, we might as well segue into embossing. Sheet metal embossing is a process for producing raised or sunken designs in sheet metal. This process can be made by means of matched male and female roller dies, or by passing sheet or strips of metal between rolls of the desired pattern that is illustrated in the bottom picture there. With 3D printing, we have no limits on the type of geometry we can create. It truly is, if you can design it, you can print it. And therefore, if you had a specific logo or a custom font that you wanted to press into sheet metal, whether it be for art or assembly, you could design that feature and press it into whatever sheet metal you'd like. You can even take a picture, for instance, convert it to grayscale, and create 3D geometry from it, and press that geometry into your sheet metal. It opens up the possibilities substantially. Metal spinning, also known as spin forming, spinning, or metal turning, is a metal forming process by which a disc or tube of metal is rotated at high speed and formed into an axially symmetric part around a rotating mandrel. Spinning can be performed by hand or by a CNC lathe. And you can see some of the typical part made by metal spinning here on the right. Now typically these mandrels that the metal is spun around are made from wood and the shapes are not very complex as you can see. While the mandrels are simple in their geometry, it still requires a lot of work to get them into shape for turning metal around them. They have to be rough cut and then finished to a, a high enough level that the shape will not transfer any of the defects, any cut lines, to the turned part. With a 3D printed mandrel, you simply have to draw half the profile, revolve that shape, and print the result. I would print it on a Stratasys Fortis machine, for instance, in PCABS, or maybe Ultim 1010 if they thought the heat were to exceed 415 degrees Fahrenheit, and there really wouldn't be a limit to what I could create. Moreover, I don't need to do any post-processing or, or finishing of the surface because it would be already high quality. Now, it may seem self-explanatory, but the definition of bending, when referring to metal forming, is... A manufacturing process that produces a V-shape, U-shape, or channel shape along a straight axis in ductile materials, most commonly sheet metal. All right, enough with the dictionary. 
Typically, it's used to produce products like electrical enclosures and rectangular ductwork. There are a lot of variations of bending, such as air bending, bottoming, coining, folding, roll bending, and wiping, to name a few. Usually, bending has to overcome both tensile stresses and compressive stresses. When the bending is done, the residual stresses cause the material to spring back towards its original position slightly. So the sheet must be overbent to achieve the proper bend angle. The amount of spring back is dependent on the material and the type of forming. So where does 3D printing fit in? Well, for thinner gauge and softer metals, the punch and die, as you can see in the demonstration on the right there, could be created in SOLIDWORKS and 3D printed. There would likely be limits to the throughput on the 3D printed press brake tooling, but again, one of the benefits to printed punch and die is keeping a digital inventory instead of keeping tools on hand. Also, you could have designed into your punch or your die the appropriate angles to overbend, if you will, to achieve the right angles on your end part. And also, depending on what kind of features you were interested in bending, you could create very non-traditional shapes because you're not limited to the manufacturing processes of the punch and die. You don't have to worry about milling with an overhang or anything. All of this hard work would mean nothing if we couldn't verify that it was within spec. 3D printing can help you optimize your quality inspection process by allowing you to print customized fixtures that hold each part exactly the way you want them to be held every time. It's repeatable and accurate, and moreover, it's great for organic shapes like the tube in the bottom left corner or the yoke in the top right. I mentioned this in the previous webinar and it's likely going to be mentioned again because it really is a great application and frankly it still fits in these manufacturing processes. So the typical process to verify with a CMM is to get the first part completed or the first article and build stack ups to hold the part for the CMM to hold it in the right orientation so you can measure it. Then someone would go through and program the touch off points on each of the first parts features and hope that you set the next part exactly the same way the next time so it can be rerun. The process we have created with the addition of 3D printers is to first reverse the geometry from the part you need to measure, design the stack ups digitally in SOLIDWORKS and print them and just bolt them to the CMM. Now you've got a custom specific fixture to hold the complex parts you just created that allows you to quickly repeat your measurements from part to part. And don't get me started on the fixture in the top left corner. In the time it likely took to build that, I could have designed it in CAD, printed it, verified its accuracy, and gone on vacation. <laughs> it looks like a nightmare. So these are only some of the ways to utilize 3D printing and additive manufacturing in the metal forming industry. But why bother? Well, again, cost savings, time savings, and organization. Waiting for custom tooling to be produced is no longer necessary. Just design it and print it. The printer works while you sleep, and it has endless uses. In fact, we're still scratching the surface of all the applications that FDM and Polyjet can fulfill. Most importantly, if you're currently turning away low-quantity jobs, because the cost benefit isn't there due to tooling costs. This could solve that problem. Paired with a seat of SOLIDWORKS, this technology could jolt your production facility into the future. Thank you for listening and keep your eyes peeled for my next webisode.